what I like is that you're like, watch me do it. Here's how many calories I'm eating. Here's my grams of fat and protein. Here's what my body looks like. And, and you tell me if eating this much is making me lean or is making me fat. In order for people to get lean, to get shredded, do people need to drastically lower their calories and just move their body more? And is a calorie really a calorie? What's what's been your experience and kind of what's your perspective and, and, and give people an update on the experiment that you're running right now. So the example everybody will use is a caloric deficit. And people who want to say a calorie is a calorie and it only matters about caloric deficits will often reference the Twinkie diet study, which was a professor, I believe out of Kansas State who ate. Now this is where everybody will get it wrong. Um, I had a guy tell me that he ate only Twinkies and it was 3000 calories. Now he was a 200 pound guy. He was overweight. He ate 1800 calories, two thirds of which came from Twinkies. Twinkies or other like, you know, hostess type products, that kind of stuff. And the rest was, you know, protein shakes and some greens and multivitamins. And he lost weight. And people will use that as the food doesn't matter. It's just calories. I'm like, okay, to a point, right? Like, any deficit that you go that big of a deficit, because 1800 calories is a pretty big deficit for a, a 200 pound male, you're going to lose weight with enough deficit, you'll lose weight. Right? That's I don't think anybody's debating that. And people have proven it, right? You'll see fitness influencers who are like, I ate McDonald's every single day and lost weight. Yeah, if, if you are able to restrict enough, okay, you have enough discipline, and enough willpower and motivation, you can lose weight eating anything. You can lose weight eating nothing, but that doesn't help the normal person. And so my contention, really since the beginning of the year when I started transitioning my thought process, was if it's, if it's truly just about calories, if it's truly thermodynamics, then what works for weight loss has to also work for weight gain, right? You can't have laws that apply to a deficit but not also apply to a surplus. And on the surplus is much easier to identify how the foods actually react with you. Because like I said, if you go in a big enough deficit, you're going to lose weight regardless of what you eat. So my initial was, well, what happens if I go into an obvious surplus? Because 4,000 calories is above my maintenance, right? My, my BMR is about 2,000 calories using, you know, the most scientifically accurate equations. Uh, I don't have a ton of activity. I've, I've been tracking it through this experiment. I'm about 5,000 steps a day. Uh, I don't do cardio. I don't, you know, do high intensity workouts. I work out four to five days a week and I burn five to 600 calories a workout. So everything that we have, 4,000 calories is way above my maintenance, which means I should gain weight. And it was my contention that if I have extra fat, right? I was a little bit, I was about 200 pounds when I started this back in February, knowing full well that I had a good five to 10 pounds that I could get rid of. I was still lean, like I still had abs. Um, but I knew that I had from where it's easy for me to walk around, I had five to 10 extra pounds. And so conceptually, I was like, you know, what? I honestly think I'll lose weight because in my experience, the moment I clean my diet up, that's when I shed fat doesn't matter how much I eat. That's what happens. And so over the three weeks I lost, I'd, I'll have to go back and check, but it was like four and a half pounds, five pounds. And it was like fat, like it wasn't water. I'd been doing carnivore for a while. And so that really made me go, wow, like, is this all like in my head? I knew a calorie wasn't a calorie, but that further reinforced it. Um, and I actually thought of an analogy today when somebody, somebody made a comment and it's like, a calorie is a calorie, just like a ton of feathers is weighs the same as a ton of steel. And I was like, yeah, you, you know, you're right. Except the steel is on the moon and the feathers are on earth, which means they don't actually weigh the same because the gravity is different. And if you take a calorie and I've, I've used, I like to use extreme examples, right? Because everybody wants it to be, oh, well, no, 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 that's what I, no, like you can't make a blanket statement and then not have extremes be true. So I did a video on firewood, right? Like there's calories in firewoods, put a piece of firewood in a bomb calorimeter and you will get a reading. 
but that's not a calorie to the human body, right? And everybody's like, well, it's a food calorie. Well, there's, there's no actual definition of what a food calorie is. A calorie is a unit of measurement, but our body views those differently. And the, the easiest one with that, and there's actually a, a paper out there titled a calorie is a calorie, uh, is contradictory to the second law of thermodynamics. Um, and the basis of it is the reason it's different is because of the thermic effect of food, right? So if I eat protein, I'm going to lose almost 30% of that to just pure digestion, to the, the metabolic inefficiency of my system. Whereas if I eat fat, I'm only losing about zero to 3%. So that right there says, no, that there's a different response just trying to metabolize this, which means I can't view all calories the same. And it's been a huge point of contention, but I, I have numerous times said, all right, if it's the same, somebody just eat a whole bunch of sugar and I'll eat a whole bunch of steak. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to gain weight and I will either stay the same or lose weight. So how, how does that work? Like, how can you say they're all the same, but then, right? Yeah, that's an interesting point because I saw that I, it might have been today's post even like eat eat three thousand calories of pure sugar and then compare that to three thousand calories of ribeyes and strangely enough, I've done that experiment. I was vegan a long time ago and I did several months, if not years, of fruit focused eating. And I did, and you can actually go way back and see this on my my YouTube channel. With 2,200 to 2,400 calories per day of fruit, I was 197 pounds and I had a belly. There was no visible abs. Did, did I gain a little bit of muscle because I was working out? Yeah, I actually I actually did. Very low protein, but I, I did gain muscle. What Were my workouts decent? Mm, they were okay. My recoverability was absolute garbage. My energy from the fruit was pretty good. But 2,200 calories and gaining that much weight for me is ridiculous because on a typical day, I'm eating close to 3,000 calories between 2,600 and 2,800. And as of this moment, I'm 180 pounds on the dot. I have visible abs. I have visible veins um, in parts of my body, which usually mean you're pretty lean, like my lats and the upper abs and the lower abs, you know, where the ilioso as is, like veins where people will don't normally get veins. Like, okay, cool, veins in your arms. There's NFL linemen with veins in their arms. That doesn't count. But when you start to have striations and veins in your non-midsection core and your lower abs, you know you're at some level of leanness. Now, there's always debate like, well, this is what 10% looks like or 12% body fat or 6%. I, I'm like you. I don't, I don't care about that. But I have proven your experiment to the T a fruit-based, a carb-based, a sugar-based diet, and I'm talking 85% carbohydrate-based, I gain fat really easily. Despite cardio, sprinting, high-intensity intervals, daily workouts, resistance training. And then, similar to you, I do lift weights, and I am I would say I'm actually pretty active because I live on a farm. I, like to, I got ADD, so I like to play a bunch of sports and mess around and do a bunch of stuff. But it is a challenge for me to gain fat while eating close to unlimited calories, not counting. Um, so it's a very interesting experiment. I'm curious as to some details. So what does like a typical day of eating look like for you right now? And what does your activity actually look like? Like what are your workouts like? How often do you do them? Yeah, so I, right now I'm in the 3,500 calorie um, phase, which is pretty close to what I would normally eat. Um, it varies between three and 4,000, depending, right? I tell people like I eat when I'm hungry and I eat till I'm full. The only time I ever track is when I'm doing a, a social media experiment. And the reason I know that works is I am today almost to the dot, the weight of my profile picture, which was taken at the beginning of the year. It was like December 30th was like the picture. And people would be like, oh, you're not as lean as your, as your picture. And I'm like, I like, I'm like you with the veins. I don't get arm veins. Like you can see a little bit. It is actually one thing that has driven me nuts for 20 years. I don't get arm veins. I will get, and I almost have it right now. I will get a, a vein from my inner thigh up to my armpit, very visible before I get bicep veins. 
drives me insane. <laughs> but anyway, like, like you said, like there's NFL linemen that have bicep veins. Um, a little off topic, but like I, I maintain if I am eating this way consistently, I will maintain my weight within two to three pounds, no matter what. It doesn't matter. I took six weeks off from the gym, right? Like I didn't work out for six weeks and my weight stayed almost the exact same. Uh, so my activity, like I work from home, right? I'm behind a computer screen. I, you know, take care of my, my little kids, but I don't walk that much, right? Like I'm, I wear my watch 24 seven and I'm about 5,000 steps a day. Like I just don't move that much. My workouts are a typical, you know, bodybuilding type diet or bodybuilding type workout. Um, I usually do, I, I change it up, but I usually do some, you know, push, pull, leg split. And then I run that back, you know, two to three times a week. So it's most times it's between four and five days a week that I work out. Uh, I work out hard, but it's not high intensity, right? I'm not doing, you know, hit type activities, box jumps, cardio, that kind of stuff. I don't do a whole lot of supersets. You know, I have long rest periods in between my, my workouts. So it's like, yeah, I'm burning calories, but when you look at people who like take the Michael Phelps diet, right? The 10,000 calorie diet in Beijing, the dude's also burning, you know, how many calories because he's in the pool six, seven hours a day. That's not me. I'm not doing that. Um, and so typically eating like I'm about, my starting point is about a pound of ground beef and a pound of steak. And then I'll add on top of that butter, cheese, you know, maybe more, maybe less, you know, whatever it is I, I feel like as far as hunger. Uh, and then, you know, that usually puts me at about 3000. And if I eat a little bit more, it's upwards of 4000. So that's, that's right where I'm at right now, about 3500. Um, and so it's like, this is like, normal everyday experiment for me. Got you. So ground beef, steak, and then some cheeses and butter is your is your typical day. For you, do you tend to eat um, in the morning? Do you wait till after your workouts? What time of day do you generally have your workout? It, give some insight into that. So I try when when I work out, I try to work out um, sometime in the morning. I'm up pretty early. I'm usually up before six. So I will usually work out between nine and ten is when I would start. Um, sometimes it'll be 11, but I typically don't eat until after my workout. So I'm almost always working out fasted, which is a game changer for me because when I was on higher carbohydrate diets, I always had to time my, my food, right? Like I'm, I'm the guy that literally would have to eat as I'm walking out onto the gym floor. Uh, now I can just eat whenever, right? It's nine o'clock my time here and I haven't eaten yet. I'll probably eat when we're done here. Um, so I'm not a super set schedule. Again, like I said, if I'm, if I wake up and I'm super hungry, which doesn't happen, like, but if it did, I would eat like, I'm, I'm, I'm not somebody I intermittent fast accidentally. Right. Um, and so typically my eating schedule is a late morning, 10 or 11 eat. And then I eat early evening, like four or five. And that's usually my food split up between two meals. And then maybe I have some, you know, cheese as a snack in between, but it's almost always, you know, that five, six, seven hour window in between. And then, you know, a solid, what is that? 15, 16 hours in between my last meal and my first meal. God, you still like a natural intermittent fasting without really trying, which I, I also think that the easiest way to intermittent fast is using a decent last meal timing. You know, if you're, if you're having your last meal at 10 o'clock at night and you're getting up at six, well, that's, that's a, that makes intermittent fasting naturally a challenge for me. I tend to have a similar eating structure to you. Um, I'll eat, I have an early workout. It's usually done by seven thirty eight, And so by nine, 10, I'm starving. And I tend to have that biggest meal be the one after my workout, just cause I'm the most hungry. I also find that naturally that keeps me super satiated, mentally focused, feeling really good all the way until somewhere between five and 6.30, which then I'll have another meal, which tends to be a, a tiny bit smaller, but still substantial. Um, and then I don't normally need something. Now I can't go to bed starving. I'm not one of those dudes. If I'm starving, there's no sleep happening, which is just what it is. And so if I'm hungry and it's getting 7.38, I might have another snack. Um, and then I sleep like a baby. And uh, I find that to be just 
like like you, no planning, no thought, just eat when I'm hungry, uh, kind of listen to my body. If I'm really hungry, I eat more. If I'm less hungry, I eat less. Do you find with your meals that they are calorically about the same, the two meals that you have, or is one bigger than the other? They're typically about the same. Uh, sometimes if I have, and, and here's the other thing about the eating when I'm hungry and eating till I'm full, I will, I will base it essentially on like the size of my steak, right? Like, so I, I went over like 70 calories on one of my days because I had a 21 ounce bone in ribeye that I didn't feel like leaving the last, you know, ounce on the plate. So I'm, like, I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. So that will factor in. I usually choose what food I'm gonna eat based on what I feel like, right? Like, do I feel like steak right now or do I feel like ground beef? Um, and so the, the size of the meal will depend on that, right? If I eat a pound of ground beef and I'm like, oh, that, that's the one I wanna eat now, that'll be a little lower in calories than when I eat my, you know, pound and a half of ribeye later in the day. If I want steak, then I'm gonna eat the pound and a half ribeye then, and then I'll eat, you know, the lower one. So when I, when I tell people that, A, I'm super simple, right? Like I might do recipes, right? I might, you know, I've got a cookbook, I might do all these, things that look fancy, I'm super basic with my food. And there's no, there's not a lot of structure, right? Like I pick which one I want to eat and then I eat how much I have. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's honestly it. It's, there is not a whole lot more thought process than that. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, it does kind of keep the whole thing pretty straightforward when you are just eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're fully satisfied, and then repeating as many times throughout the day as you need to. I I love that because I, I too come from a background of being an ex-athlete. And, you know, when you go from being a stupid high school kid and not giving a shit about what you're eating and eating whatever to kind of like trying to figure that out, it can be dogmatic and stressful. And like, okay, I got to get this many grams of carbs pre-workout. And then Oh, I have this magical fairy tale hour after my workout where I'm, you know, my my hormones and my testosterone needs to be fed, and it's like this feeding window, and it can get a little it can get a little reductive sciency. Um, I'm curious with your ground beef, do you do you go for fattier cuts like 80 20 or even 75 25, or do you go with leaner leaner ground beef? How does that work for you? Um, it's almost always 80 20. The reason I do 80 20 is I have found that a 70, 30 fat to protein, um, macro split is kind of my sweet spot. Um, to break that down for, for people listening, 70% of my calories come from fat, 30% calories come from protein. And the way that equates, given that a gram of fat has more than twice as many calories is that's almost a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So during my day, I will eat an equal part protein to fat. Um, in terms of grams. And so 70, 20 is almost exactly that. I think there's a tad more fat, which, which puts it almost exactly a 70, 30. So that's just easy for me. I like the way it tastes. I don't like leaner ground beef. Um, even 85, 15, I start to notice it. And I'm like, eh, I don't like it. It's 90, 10. I'm like, yeah, people that come out and they're like, get the 93, seven. I'm like, absolutely not. But <laughs> like maybe for making a taco or something and you don't want the extra, like, you know, liquid in there but i i typically do the either you know cook it in a pan ground beef or do burgers uh but 80 20 is almost exclusively what i eat well and for those who are curious what in grams does that come out to with protein and fat per day for you uh let me see it is close to 200 200 yeah um so over the course of the day i'll, I'll eat about 200 grams of fat and 200 grams of protein uh doing quick math that's 18, 2,800. Yeah. No, not quite. 27, 2,600. Um, so a little more than that, but 200, 200 is about the, the range that I would do. Cool. Yeah, that, that makes a, a lot of sense. So intuitive eating, not a shit ton of activity, um, weightlifting, and being a dad and working behind a screen and eating basically as much as you want and being able to maintain a lean shredded physique. I, I think you're proving and many people are that a calorie really is not a calorie. There's so much more to it than that. And I, I find the whole topic very interesting. 
because there there's just so much debate. And one of the things that I like about your your content and what you're doing is okay, let, let's put the reductive science, which you can say what you want about the the place that science is in right now. I, I call it more science is more of a hedge fund oriented um thing than actual real science, but that's kind of a conversation for a whole nother story. But 